healing is possible. We share stories of people everywhere who have healed from their diagnoses. Powered by HealthRevolution.org I'm your host, Dr. Anup Kumar. Welcome to the Healing is Possible podcast. My guest today is Dr. Martina Solini. Dr. Solini is an assistant professor at Humanitas University in Italy. She is a physician researcher, board certified in nuclear medicine, and has a PhD in molecular and experimental medicine. Dr. Solini is a principal investigator of many clinical trials focused on oncological imaging and radio immunotherapy. She has authored or co-authored over 60 papers in internationally peer-reviewed journals, as well as 20 book chapters. In 2019, she won the Francesco De Luca International Prize. So Dr. Cellini, I became interested after seeing this paper that you authored called Complete, Complete Remission of Follicular Lymphoma After SARS COVID Infection from the Flare Phenomenon to the Abscopal Effect. So tell us about this really interesting case that you came across. Thank you very much for your introduction and thank you for your interest in our research. Uh, this was a very interesting case. Uh, yes, I fully agree. This was a, a 61 uh, old man affected by follicular lymphoma. He was diagnosed on uh, September 2019 and thereafter he was treated with uh, chemotherapy and uh, he performed a restaging FDG PET CT on uh, April 2020, pardon, uh, which showed uh, the shrink, uh, shrinkage of uh, the lymphoma lesion. Uh, and this uh, finding was consistent with a partial response to treatment, but images, images shows also um, a lung uh, infection suggestive for COVID-19 pneumonia. Uh, he had no symptoms, uh, but the swab confirmed our hypothesis and um, uh, accordingly, he was treated uh, for uh, COVID-19 infection. And uh, when he recovered uh, from uh, the infection, we, we performed a new scan to uh, restage the disease in uh, June 2020. And uh, uh, um, we, uh, we observed an increase in both sides and FDG uptake of the abdominal lesion. So we um, suspected, suspected a progressive disease. Uh, however, uh, hematologists performed uh, a CT guided biopsy and uh, this uh, uh, exam excluded malignancy. Uh, we performed another TC, um, CT biopsy and uh, also the second one excluded uh, uh, the presence of malignancy. So uh, we um, decided to, um, for a watch and wait uh, period, and a new um, scan on September 2020 was completely negative. So we concluded that uh, he was uh, uh, recovered. So, so he had the lymphoma before COVID-19 infection, then he developed the infection and the rescan initially showed increased disease. Is that right? So there were there were bigger lesions. Yes, yes. This is the the very strange uh, findings that we observed because we observed in the first in the first restaging scan uh, we observed that the lesion was smaller. Uh, compared to baseline, but uh, still present. And in this scan, we diagnosed the, the COVID-19 infection. 
If you're inspired by this video and want to take your health or the health and healing of a loved one to the next level, visit healthrevolution.org slash jumpstart. Sign up, learn to activate the most powerful engines of health and healing. healthrevolution.org slash jumpstart. Feel your power. In the second restaging scan performed after the recovery of infection, we observed uh, uh, an increase in size and uptake mm. of the lesion. And this was uh, um, consistent with progressive disease. And it could be the case uh, since the patient suspends uh, anti-tumor treatment. So um, we were uh, really convinced that the patient had progressive disease. but biopsy excluded twice mm. uh, the presence of malignancy, so it was not the case. And uh, uh, the follow-up scan was completely negative. So it was quite uh, surprisingly for us to... Uh, to okay, it okay. was not really expected. Okay, so let me see if I understand it right and correct me if I'm wrong. So the, the first scan you saw the disease, you detected the disease. The second scan was when he had COVID-19 infection, um, yeah. but the, the lesions were actually smaller then. With the infection, the lesions were smaller. And the third scan was after he recovered from infection, but at that time, the lesions were bigger again. They had become bigger, but when you did the biopsy, it was negative for malignancy. So it was a mass of cells, but it they were not malignant cells at that point. Yeah. Right. And then you did one more scan and then the tumor had gone away completely, basically. Yes. Right. So it's, it's almost as if uh, the size was going, was like the leading indicator and the malignancy was lagging. Right. So like the, the size was getting bigger. So at its biggest, or actually the malignancy was leading because at its biggest, the malignancy had already gone away and then it took time for the size to go down yes. afterward. What, yes, what we speculate is that COVID-19 infection uh, may have uh, firstly induced uh, the so-called uh, flare phenomenon. Yeah. And, uh, um, but finally resulting in an obscopal effect. So uh, we, um, the, the, the possible uh, mechanism of, uh, of remission uh, was, uh, we, we, at the beginning of this history, uh, we uh, performed different hypotheses. Mm -hmm. And the first was that uh, we were seeing to a long-term effect of chemotherapy. But uh, he stopped the treatment in March and the evolutionary track of the lesion, as you mentioned before, did not support this speculation. Because why, we, um, why would the lesion first uh, um, regress and then enlarge? In the hypothesis of chemo-related uh, disappearance of the lesion, I would have expected a, um, a progressive shrinkage of the lesion. Yeah. And thereafter, we also suppose that uh, drug administered for COVID-19 infection determined the, uh, the final outcome. However, he got uh, uh, antimicrobial treatment uh, standard of care of uh, many infection and uh, uh, low weight tapering and uh, uh, a number of patients suffering from tumors uh, uh, may receive these drugs and uh, mm, although um, there's uh, uh, many evidences that uh, um, antimicrobial treatment may have an anti-tumor effect uh, um, I personally do not know uh, cases of uh, complete response of their uh, antimicrobial uh, antibiotics 
administered to treat an infection. And uh, even in the case, uh, again, uh, I can't really um, understand why the lesion before enlarged and after disappeared. Yeah. And uh, he received antimicrobial. Did he get antibiotics specifically? And if so, what was he getting antibiotics for? Uh, he performed both uh, um, antibiotics and antiviral uh, drugs. Okay. Both. Okay. So was there a specific bacterial infection that was also being treated or were they just, no, no. it was experimental. Yeah. Yes, because during uh, uh, this period in our hospital, all patients received the same treatment, which included antibiotics and antiviral okay. uh, drugs. Okay. And when uh, did he restart chemotherapy in this in this time frame? Never. Never. Okay. All right. Up to March before uh, the second scan we performed yeah. and never uh, start again chemotherapy because okay. biopsy excluded malignancy so hematologist uh, decided for a watch and wait. Yeah. So tell us about the flare phenomenon because I, I want to get into whether this flare phenomenon can maybe not explain, but at least give us some hints or suggestions about why the size went up when yes. the malignancy was negative and then went down. Yes, this phenomenon is uh, uh, observed in certain conditions, typically in prostate cancer and uh, in lymphoma patients, um, in whom we observed uh, the um, apparent progression of lesions at uh, imaging despite uh, clinical improvement. And uh, this apparent progression is related to inflammatory cells which determine uh, the enlargement of the lesion and also a, um, an intense uptake of the tracer. And this is, is this, this is typically observed in uh, lymphoma patients uh, who are treated with immunotherapy, uh, such as nivolumab or other uh, PDL1 uh, drugs. And uh, this uh, is related to the uh, inflammatory response at the tumor site. So the lesions, uh, the enlargement of the lesion is related to a local uh, in, in high inflammatory response. So do you mean that the, the increase in size is specifically because of those cytokines and the edema and that process of fighting what's happening there and the swelling, almost like if, you, if I sprain my ankle, I have a local inflammatory response and the ankle becomes bigger. Is it like that? Yes, okay. it's more or less the same. Yes, okay. the local inflammatory response induced by drug uh, at the lesion site. Okay, so that could explain maybe mm -hmm. if there was this flare phenomenon happening as a result maybe of COVID-19 infection at the site of the lymphoma, then the lesion would be getting bigger, but it would actually be fighting what's happening so that maybe the malignancy could be negative. Although we would expect that later, right? We would expect that, that healing to come down. But I suppose if it's, if it's a very intense phenomenon, can it be that even while the flare phenomenon is happening and while that is edematous and enlarged, that malignancy could be negative because the, the inflammatory response was so effective? Is that possible? Yes, this yeah. is our hypothesis. Okay. What we, we call the abscopal effect, which, is, uh, uh, mm, which consists in the observation of uh, um, the response of uh, a lesion 
to um, a local treatment in another site of the same patient. So if, uh, for example, we treat uh, with uh, external beam radiotherapy, uh, the thorax, but also abdominal lesions disappeared, we can suppose that the uh, immune response induced by radiotherapy, related to radiotherapy, can cure also the abdominal lesions. And okay. the same was supposed for this patient. So the uh, immune response um, triggered by COVID-19 uh, infection may result in uh, the disappearance of the lesion. Okay, so for the audience, Dr. Cellini is talking about abscopal effect, A-B-S-C-O-P-A-L. And so scope, scope, of course, comes from the word to look, right? When you look, you focus on one place and ab is the prefix for away, A-B. So away looking or looking in other places or seeing in other places is exactly what the abscopal effect is. So the flare phenomenon is a flare in a local site and abscopal is all the effects that are happening non-locally or away from that local site. So as a result of some phenomenon happening in one place, it seems to happen everywhere else. That's the <laughs> abscopal effect. So have you seen this in other cases? There are other case reports as well, right? You mentioned a few others in your paper. Can you tell us about a few other cases where you've seen um, a local inflammatory response having a abscopal effect on remission? Yes, there are uh, also other cases uh, reported uh, after COVID-19 infection, specifically in, uh, um, in lymphoma, in uh, uh, renal cell carcinoma, and also in colorectal cancer. But uh, interestingly, we also observed uh, um, the same after vaccination for COVID-19. And uh, it was more surprisingly that uh, after infection, because in this case, uh, uh, it was uh, um, in, in the patient that we presented before, we had only one lesion. Mm -hmm. Is that, uh, in, uh, in the case after vaccination, the patient was really young, but she had a very uh, huge disease burden. So it was really surprisingly, but we hypothesized the same mechanism. So that the uh, vaccination induce uh, a very, uh, powerful immune response that fight the lymphoma. So in this, going back to the previous patient, his major lesion was at the para, para aortic lymph node. Was that the, the large, the single large lesion that you were talking about that shrunk and then grew? Okay. So that was one of the major lesions, but there were also other lesions in the abdomen. Is that right? No, not no. for. So he only had this one lesion. He had very, uh, at the beginning, uh, he had uh, more than one lymph node, but uh, uh, after treatment, uh, so the first scan uh, after chemotherapy um, showed the persistent, the pers persistence of only one lesion in the abdomen. Okay, got it. Well, he had only uh, subdiaphragmatic uh, disease, uh, but uh, after chemotherapy, he had only one uh, enlarged lymph node. Okay. And the other cases you mentioned with renal cell carcinoma, colorectal cancer, were you speaking about those in relation to COVID-19 infection or vaccination, or was it something else? No, no. There are both uh, um, the cases I mentioned before um, related to uh, renal, renal cancer 
and colorectal cancer and lymphoma are related to COVID-19 infections, but okay. there are more rare case also uh, of uh, recovered patient after vaccination. And do you know what the malignancies were in those cases of people who recovered from malignancy? Sorry, say again. Lymphoma. lymphoma it was lymphoma. Patient. What is it that is unique about lymphoma? Because we see lymphoma in general is, you know, we see remission in lymphoma and it can respond to treatment. Any theories about what it is about lymphoma that makes it so responsive to apparently many different kinds of stimuli? Um, no, I, I, I am not the, really the expertise to go so deeply in this uh, in this uh, answer. Anyway, uh, the type of lymphoma uh, were different. So we okay. reported the follicular lymphoma, but others reported also Hodgkin lymphoma. So uh, yeah. this is really different uh, yeah. one from the other one. So I'm not really sure that uh, uh, the type of uh, the uh, tumor is uh, the most sensitive to uh, vaccination or COVID-19 uh, yeah. okay. fact. And I'm of not, course, sorry, go ahead. I'm not sure that the relationship is between the infection and the tumor type, but okay. the other factors, including uh, patient susceptibility ability or uh, genetic factors or uh, mm, I don't know uh, which factors specifically but I think that uh, many um, aspects may contribute to this type of outcome. And the response to vaccinations where um, these rare responses where a person gets vaccinated and seems to have remission from cancer, um, a classic example of the abscopal effect, right? Where we administer a vaccine in one site, it stimulates um, the immune system. And from there, you see a response somewhere else in the body. Yes, sure. So tell us about the importance of the vitality of the immune system, because all of this is a kind of immunotherapy, essentially, whether you're getting a vaccine or you're getting infected, right, by COVID-19, or it's some way of making the immune system respond more vitally, right? A more robust response is basically what we're trying to do by all of these different methods. And usually in cancer, at least for the general public, um, it's not often thought about that way because we think about the immune system in terms of antibiotics, right? Or um, antimicrobial activity or fighting invaders, but not necessarily in terms of cancer. But there's obviously this very close link between the vitality of your immune system and cancer. Can you speak to that link? Yes, and there's uh, more evidence that the immune uh, response and the that the immune uh, system interact with cancer. And uh, there's a great attention also uh, in the field of research in the, uh, the so-called uh, uh, tumor microenvironment, which is a sort of uh, uh, in between uh, between the tumor lesion and uh, the organ or the site of the tumor in, uh, in the patient. Because there's uh, a lot of uh, molecules that can be used as target, for example, for uh, drugs directed uh, against uh, this molecule but also because there's uh, um, a great attention that uh, um, be because the, um, the composition of the microenvironment and the immune uh, um, cells that are uh, close to the tumor 
may influence the treatment response and also the behavior of the lesion. So there's a lot of uh, attention to this uh, entity and also to the immune system of uh, each patient because uh, the composition of uh, the tumor microenvironment uh, is not a static, uh, um, is not static, is really dynamic. And there are, there are many factors that may influence this, uh, um, this composition and also the evolutionary track of the, uh, of the lesion and possibly the final outcome. Can you give us an example of a few of those factors, what are some of the major factors that influence the tumor microenvironment, which itself is so key in the prognosis and the pathway that this condition takes? It's difficult to respond to this question because it's, there's a lot of evidence that there's an influence and that some cells are in favor or not in favor of the tumor, but we are not really um, uh, reached a, an agreement or a, a final uh, a final um, uh, a final uh, understanding. Um, yes, of uh, of this. Uh, okay. Of what we would have expected to fight the, the tumor in terms of uh, uh, composition of microenvironment. And this very idea of stimulating the immune system is uh, a hotbed of research now, right? New forms of immunotherapy. Can you give us an idea of what may be in the works? What is in research now? in terms of new kinds of or new approaches to immunotherapy to stimulate the immune system? Yes, there are a lot of examples uh, such as uh, immunotherapy or mm, PDL1 uh, drug uh, treatment and CAR T. There, uh, there are very um, many uh, attempts and also uh, drug already uh, in clinical practice that uh, uh, treating the, um, stimulating the immune system uh, fight the tumor. Do you find any connection in terms of the patients you see and work with in researching cancer in terms of their background or their approach to this or their social life, or their environment, their food, their relationships, do you find, does that help or does that influence in any way in what you see? Not in this patient. Uh, what we observed in this patient is that uh, he was completely uh, asymptomatic. And uh, we had another patient uh, with the uh, infection, COVID-19 infection, and uh, it was uh, symptomatic and it was uh, rapidly progressive during uh, the infection. We can speculate that the immune system of uh, the, um, the, this patient, so the, the lymphoma patient was more powerful than the other one, but this is just a speculation because there's no evidence is about uh, foods or um, environmental uh, factors that can explain different uh, behavior of the same uh, infection uh, in, in patient. Anyway, I think that we need to really uh, learn more about COVID-19 because I think that we have also a, a long way uh, before to really uh, 
understand the underlying mechanism to the infection and also to possibly uh, cure patient with this type of um, this type of uh, um, of uh, mechanism. Wonderful, and we know that in in many of these cases, um, that even if we see this local flare, this abscopal effect, and this remission, that sometimes after such infections and after that intense period of immune activity, then those lesions can come back again. Right? It, it doesn't mean that just because it happened once that that's going to be permanent. Yes, and unfortunately, this was the story of our patient. He was disease-free until last March, but uh, last March he started again to um, complain some uh, symptoms suggestive for tumor recurrence, and we performed a new FTG PET scan, which confirmed that uh, the disease recurred. Anyway, he was disease-free. Uh, he he stay disease-free for uh, one year, so more than two years or so. Uh, we were really happy for him, but unfortunately, uh, the tumor recurred. So, you know, just a, a call to everybody who's listening, um, who may be researchers, you know, we need to hear these stories. We need these case reports so that we can investigate more and see what's going on. You know, we've interviewed so many people who have healed from so many conditions, right? Not only cancer, but many autoimmune diseases and conditions that actually should not get better without certain medications, but people do get better. And some, some people stay better for a long time or for the rest of their lives. And the only way we can investigate this is by reading such case reports and wondering and researching. So thank you, Dr. Salini, for writing this up. Let me ask you, the name of the podcast is Healing is Possible. So as a physician, as a researcher, as a human being, when you hear this phrase, healing is possible, what does that mean to you? Thank you very much. It's very, very important to focus on research. And uh, I think that, uh, yes, uh, we need to, um, to learn, read, and listen about uh, stories to, um, to go ahead with research and to find possible explanation for our patients. The stories shared here are the experiences of the speakers. They're not intended as medical advice. Join our network or simply share your story at healthrevolution.org. Healing is possible. Thank you.